Hi everyone, today we'll talk about a career journey from security to privacy engineering. Here is a snapshot of my career journey from security engineering to privacy. I started with an undergrad degree in computer science. I found cybersecurity to be super fascinated and decided to pursue a master's degree in cybersecurity. After my master's degree, I um, started my consulting journey. I started as an intern at EY and had a number of roles in EY where I was in the GRC team, focused on forensics, uh, did some insider threat, AppSec before moving on to a data governance role. Um, during this consulting experience, I understood that a lot of the problems that I was seeing in the industry stemmed from not having a good handle on data and not understanding what data companies have and how it's flowing into in their organizations. So I started uh, my own startup focused on data profiling. And after a couple of years um, um, as a startup founding team member, I moved to DoorDash to build their technical privacy team and stand up their privacy engineering practice. So how did I learn privacy skill sets when I never had a privacy engineering title throughout my journey? So I used five techniques. The first one was learning by doing. I learned on the job because when I was in consulting, I did get to experience uh, uh, working on privacy projects or privacy adjacent projects. The second technique was uh, pursuing certifications. There were not a lot of formal privacy engineering courses at the time. So I, I focused on getting certifications, especially for the legal aspects of privacy. The third was I leveraged the protege effect. So when you teach something, you get better at that. Um, I, I did a lot of talks uh, in, in technical symposiums and um, gave a lot of guest lectures at grad schools, which helped me get better at, um, at learning the core concepts of privacy engineering. Um, I also contributed to open source projects and research. And lastly, I joined a lot of think tanks, uh, standards committees, and working groups, which gave me access to a lot of other really smart people who were working in the privacy engineering space. So let's take a step back. What is privacy engineering? So there is no widely accepted definition of what privacy engineering is. Every company has set up their privacy engineering program in a different way. So depending on who you ask, you will hear a different answer. I've listed out a very simplistic definition of privacy engineering, uh, where I'm saying that privacy engineering involves converting requirements for privacy into design and technical controls. What are these designs and technical controls? Um, some examples could be, let's say you work in a company where uh, a lot of health information is collected, a lot of PII, personal information is collected. So you build an anonymization pipeline um, or you build um, in another company, you build a consent management function to, to gather preferences from individuals or you deploy privacy enhancing technology or lastly, you um, are performing privacy design reviews. So how can security engineers leverage what they already know and learn about privacy engineering? So um, let's look at this diagrams. I feel that security and privacy have a lot of overlaps and this overlapping, this, this um, union of the two is where um, we focus on uh, mitigating breaches. So you're protecting personal information and stopping a data breach. Outside of this personal information focus, cybersecurity is generally uh, concerned with addressing risk that stem from um, the you know, loss of confidentiality, in, uh, integrity, or availability. While privacy, your risk stem from um, events arising from data processing. So some examples could be, let's say a company collects per, uh, phone numbers 
for uh, performing 2FA verification, but decides later to use these phone numbers for sending marketing SMS. Or let's say a company uses deceptive design to start um, collecting more information, tricking people into sharing more information that they would want to share. So the essential difference between how you view security and privacy is that cybersecurity, you're focused on safeguarding against risk to organization. You're protecting the company, its IP, its customer data. But on the privacy side, you're focused on reducing harm to individuals. So you're, you're more human centric, you're thinking about what could go wrong um, and how uh, an individual or a human can be impacted due to a negative experience. Diving further into the commonalities and differences between security and privacy, you're all familiar with the CIA triad, but not a lot of people know about the privacy engineering objectives. Predictability is making sure that a user can reasonably predict how their information will be used. Dissociability is making sure the data is processed without associating it with an individual. And manageability means that um, an individual can, at a granular degree, administer how their data is, is used. For example, uh, can we delete the data? Can I stop processing? Um, can I revoke consent? Um, now let's look at a framework and I've picked NIST uh, for ease of understanding, but the same applies to other frameworks. If we look at the NIST cybersecurity framework and the privacy framework, there is a huge amount of overlap. Three functions that govern, identify, and protect are common between both the frameworks. So if you're familiar with building cybersecurity frameworks, you already have a leg up and, and you can jumpstart your cyber uh, or your privacy engineering skill set. And in terms of the top 10 risk, a lot of the security top 10 risks actually like bubble up into the top uh, the first few privacy risks. And the majority of the privacy top 10 risks are actually focused on data handling or data use. So making sure um, those are, are areas that you focus on if you want to build on to your security skill set and add privacy um, to your portfolio. And why should companies care about uh, privacy? Not just about you know, not just about like getting fined and and being on the front page. Um, so let's take a look at this study. So Google commissioned the study with about, 10,000 uh, participants and they were given two choices. They were presented some negative privacy scenarios and some and, and, uh, and negative security scenarios and asked how what impact would that have on the brand trust. And um, not surprisingly, the negative uh, privacy experience also had a very similar impact on brand trust. What this shows us that you can't neglect privacy um, because both have a very similar impact on brand. So we have to stop thinking about it as privacy versus security and think about privacy and security. Uh, security engineers can become privacy engineers and, and um, the crux is that cybersecurity can exist without privacy, but the reverse is not true. Privacy engineering is an emerging field. There's a lot of potential. So this is a really good time to add privacy engineering to your skill set. Um, there are some resources that I'm happy to share Um uh, there are two books, uh, Privacy Design Strategies and the Data Privacy Run Book by Engineers that I recommend for anyone who is a security engineer and wants to learn about privacy. There are certifications that can be pursued. Uh, I'm also happy to um, connect with you and guide you. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Thank you.